This is Hupcast, the short, sharp podcast from the Hands Up Project. And now, the winner is... The Elton for Local Innovation. Facebook Live Team Teaching for the Palestinian English Curriculum. Nick Bilbera, Raja Abu Jassar and Syrah Wood, the Hands Up Project. My goodness, I just need a moment here to breathe. <laughs> oh God, it's such a great pleasure to be here today with you, although I'm not here in person, but I feel like I'm among you in person. It's a great honor. I'm so proud to be receiving this award. Uh, the place I come from really, really values education. So when I, despite all of the uh, circumstances, the hardships and the difficulties we live, through on a daily basis, we never let that stand in the way. But suddenly a pandemic hits and life stops and uh, schools are closed. So what do we do? Do we stop? Um, of course not. The Hands Up Project immediately uh, stepped in to rescue and uh, to start working along with UNRWA teachers, the amazing UNRWA teaching, teachers. So uh, the team teaching was about um, having the Palestinian teacher, the amazing Palestinian teachers with our incredible and brilliant uh, volunteers who are spread all around the world to work together hand in hand to deliver the, the Palestinian curriculum through Facebook live sessions. And they did it uh, passionately, unconditionally, and they worked hard day and night to come up with these uh, lessons. As a result, education now uh, was accessible to each uh, student inside Palestine, not only inside Palestine, it was uh, accessible to everyone uh, because it was like broadcasted on Facebook, everyone could share, everyone could comment, and uh, that was really amazing and a, work, uh, a teamwork. So I, I don't know where to start to thank, but first of all, I would like to thank wholeheartedly, I would like to thank everyone who was involved, uh, the Palestinian teachers, the amazing volunteers, thank you so much for uh, doing your work and working hard on this uh, to, come at, to make it uh, possible. Uh, thank you as well uh, for uh, everyone who was involved in the sessions, commenting, giving feedback and uh, scaffolding learning, learners. Uh, not last but not least, I would like to thank um, our amazing trustees of the Hands Up Project. Thank you so much for being such a great supporters for us. And we don't want to forget our donors, our um, very generous donors uh, for supporting us and also uh, making us uh, co go on with this amazing work that we do on a daily basis. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick, for uh, establishing this amazing uh, charity that has become a very important part in every and each and single Palestinian teacher and student in Palestine. Thank you all. I just feel so much overwhelmed. I think I'm going to cry for a bit now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's message comes from somebody who I'm going to have trouble introducing, mainly because I'm not sure my words can do her justice. She's the administrative coordinator of the Hands Up Project in Gaza. She's an English teacher. She's a mum of five kids. She's my colleague and she's my close friend. Right now, I'm wearing the Palestinian necklace she gave me because that way I get to keep her close to my heart. She's organised. She's 100% committed to whatever she does. She's a proud Palestinian and she's absolutely passionate about amplifying the voices of Palestinian children. She keeps calm 
in the eye of a storm and she has the ability to light up every room she walks into, even virtually. I witnessed this on the night that the Hands Up Project and UNRWA Gaza won the British Council Elton's Award for Local Innovation. Raja's online acceptance speech from Gaza, she couldn't be there in person, held an audience of over 300 people absolutely enthralled and won a standing ovation. Anyone who has ever met her will tell you that her smile, her warmth and her passion for life are contagious. Last night we received this message from her. Hi Nick. I'm sorry, the connection's bad. It's very bad here now. They're in the middle of Gaza now. We see death every day. We're so lucky to be alive until now. The past couple of days were absolutely deadly and horrifying. There's been three airstrikes happened just next to our house. Our windows were smashed and shattered. We almost choked from the smoke. We thought it was our house that was bombed. There is no food left at all. We can't find any flour. And water, it isn't any better. It's become more and more difficult to get water.